Hi, my name is John and I'm a senior manager at Middlebrooks. This is a short video on acting as a member of a creditors committee. In many insolvency procedures, such as liquidations or administrations, the insolvency practitioner may invite creditors to form a creditor committee to assist the insolvency practitioner by representing the general body of creditors, as well as uh, providing expert guidance where necessary, such as where the company is involved in a niche or specialist industry. Creditors' committees are also often needed where litigation or investigation is anticipated. How is a creditors' committee formed? For a committee to come into being, there must be a minimum of three unsecured creditors who are willing to act. The maximum number of creditors who may sit on the committee at any one time is five. So if more than five unsecured creditors express an interest in being on the committee, there must be a vote. This vote will be managed by the office holder and other unsecured creditors will be given the opportunity of deciding which of the interested creditors get to form the committee. You have to agree in writing to sit on the committee, so you will never be voted onto a committee without your knowledge or, or agreement. Who can sit on the committee? Any creditor of the insolvent company with a debt at least part of which is unsecured may be put forward to sit on the committee. If they cease to be an unsecured creditor for any reason, they will automatically cease to be a member of the committee. You also cannot be an undischarged bankrupt or a disqualified director. You do not need to have any special qualifications or previous experience as a committee member. What will I have to do as a member of a creditors committee? Business of the committee is conducted through meetings, usually physical, um, but also by way of conference call or other remote attendance. Decisions may also be made by written correspondence and resolutions. The frequency of meetings and reporting by the office holder to the committee will generally be agreed between the office holder and members at the first meeting of the committee. The first meeting of the committee must be held within six weeks of its formation. At the meetings, the office holder will update the committee on relevant matters and may seek guidance or formal approval for specific courses of action. In particular, you will be asked to approve the basis of the remuneration of the office holder. Why should I act as a member of a creditor committee? As a member of a committee, you will have the opportunity to have a positive impact on the insolvency process, providing essential information and knowledge that may assist in tracing assets that can be realized for the benefit of the general body of creditors. Can I be paid for being a member of a creditor committee? Unfortunately, no, you cannot be paid for being a member of a committee. This is a voluntary role. Can I resign from being on a creditor committee? A member of a creditor committee can resign from office at any time. If you have any questions on, on creditor committees in general or being a member of a creditor committee, please feel free to reach out to any member of the Middlebooks team.